Seattle has been in the midst of a building boom. We're the city of cranes. We're also tearing things down like crazy. The Alaskan Way Viaduct is a great example. Today in the Mossback Den, we're talking about tearing down something that was never built. We're talking about the ramps to nowhere. <laughs> In the 1950s and 60s, Seattle's future was seen as a city of highways. Planners wanted to put highways all over town. We put I-5 through downtown, but they also envisioned a city circled with freeways and expressways, north, south, east, and west. And one of the most notorious of those was called the R.H. Thompson Expressway. The Thompson was named for the famed city engineer who reshaped Seattle. He was responsible for many of the regrades that we underwent. The R.H. Thompson Expressway was going to run north-south in East Seattle. It was going to run from Ravenna through the Arboretum and Montlake, then down to the Rainier Valley and the Central area. Originally, voters approved the idea, but skepticism began to build as people gained environmental consciousness in the 1960s and 70s. And many people were also unhappy with the results of what happened when I-5 split the city in two. The experience with I-5 saw thousands of homes torn down and neighborhoods split in half. The response to that was to take a second look at the kind of freeway mania that was shaping Seattle. A coalition formed of people who were skeptical about the benefits of freeways, environmentalists, and people whose neighborhoods would be damaged by the R.H. Thompson. They included people from places like Ravenna and Montlake, the University of Washington, and they even included central area groups like the Black Panthers. They referred to the freeways as concrete dragons, and their job was to slay them, and they literally blocked bulldozers the day construction was to begin. By the 1970s, grassroots political activism was working in Seattle, both in the area of civil rights and in causes like saving the Pike Place Market. The environmental consciousness had been raised. Public opinion changed about the R.H. Thompson. People decided it was a bad idea. And in 1972, voters voted it down. When the Evergreen Point Bridge, now the 520 Bridge, was built in the early 1960s, ramps to the proposed R.H. Thompson were built. Once the project was stopped, the ramps stayed in place and thus became the ramps to nowhere. The on-ramps and off-ramps and overpasses stood unconnected like ancient ruins, a folly in a park. Over the years, people got used to them and in fact put them to use. Instead of carrying commuters, the ramps to nowhere serviced swimmers who would jump off into the lake and sunbathers. Visitors to the Arboretum would wander and see these remnants of the freeway and wondered why it stopped in midair. The unfinished highway created a kind of informal monument to citizen activism. Here was a place where people said no and stopped a freeway in its tracks. With the expansion of Highway 520, the ramps are coming down. Some say it's a boon. It will benefit the park, restoring it to its more natural state. Others, though, hope that some remnant of the remnant, the remnant of the ramps, stays there as kind of monument to citizen activism. It's nice to be reminded that we stopped the dragon in its tracks and that the ramps to nowhere led us to a better place.